children in Connecticut, the lives of those in Aurora, and every other shooting that the media likes to bathe in the blood of before they even happened. But they will not accept that because they have filled themselves well, with the last two speakers today. You've heard this gentleman on InfoWars. You've heard him on 990 WBOB. A man that tells it like it is. It doesn't take any crap from anybody. Mr. Dan Bedondi. How are you doing today? You know, I'm like, I wish I could say I'm having fun, but you know, I'm not because I'm a Rhode Island resident. I'm not. I lived in Rhode Island, born in Rhode Island, and most of all, in the United States of America here. And I'm starting to see my constitution, your constitution, our Bill of Rights, slowly but surely get tortured in an incinerator by President Barack Obama and his gang of thugs. Now, I've made a living on confronting criminals. I made a living on confronting corrupt people. And I call it how I see it. And Gordon Fox, Gina Raimondo, uh, Senators White House, Crap House, they read Diane Feinstein, John McCain, Michael Bloomberg, and President Obama, and many others. You all are criminals of the state. You are criminals of the Constitution. You are criminals of liberty and freedom, and we're not going to take it no more. Yeah. Now we've got about 200 people at least standing out here in the cold to all say in one voice, you will not take our guns! We the people, not the government, not the state. And we got a guy, Mr. Tavares, that's running for governor, who said he's, if he has to, he'll go over the state and go right to Washington to take our guns. But you know what, Mr. Tavares? Get the hell out of our country if you want our guns. Go to North Korea. And that goes to any politician out there, any state police chief, any corrupt criminal, police, fire, whoever you are, especially the government, Homeland Security, you want our guns over our dead bodies. Now, Rhode Island, okay, first of all, it was a man named Edmund Burke that quoted one thing. Those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. And those names mentioned apparently do not know history well. Right here in Rhode Island, we were the first to declare our freedom of religion against the British. We were the first to declare our freedom period and our independence against the British. And like Sal said before me, we didn't just take uh, throw sh uh, tea off a ship. We burned a damn Gatsby down. <laughs> and back in the King Philip War, the first war here in America, was over guns because the British wanted our guns. They didn't want the Indians and the local people to have guns. Same thing with the Revolution. Same thing with every war. They want our guns all across the planet. History repeated itself. Adolf Hitler, Fidel Castro, Stalin, Mao, they all took the guns and the, we proves that registration leads to confiscation, then dictatorship. And it's exactly, and that's exactly what Barack Obama and Michael Bloomberg and Diane Feinstein want from us. They want our liberties, they want a much homeland security and the corrupt scum of the United Nations peacekeepers to come take our guns here on American soil. And I'm here to speak on behalf of every red-blooded American, especially my family who fought in the King Philip War, fought in the Revolutionary War, fought in every war there was to save our freedom here. Hell no, you're not taking our guns. And you are not taking our freedom. Because George Washington said, guns are liberty's teeth. And those teeth are really sharp, and they're going to bite you. You come try to take our guns, we're going to bite your head off. Hey folks, we're calling for a second revolution. A revolution of peace and information. And that, folks, the pen is mightier than the sword. And with that saying, we could bring the corrupt politicians right here in the state house, get them the hell out of the state. No more. You know, we should be... During the week, we should go be banging on these people's doors, marching in that rotundo, saying, you know what, get the hell out of here. We didn't vote for you.
you know, it just sickens me. You know, I mean, it really does. People over and over and over and over again still vote for these criminals. But I'm telling you right now, you call me extreme, but what do you think our founding fathers would do right now if they would come to life today? These people will be tossed out on their asses. And that's what we the people need to do. You know, screw political correctness. There's no place in the truth movement for political correctness. We gotta take our back our state. And when we take our back our state, we're gonna lie with our brothers in Connecticut and Massachusetts and take back New England, then the damn country. Yeah. And last but not least, one thing I want to say to everybody out there, thank you for coming out and all of you out there right now, you're all taking part of history right here, right now, as our founding fathers did over 200 years ago. All of you. Give all yourselves a round of applause. And hopefully at the end of 2014, we all could be back here, right here again. It's instead of yelling and screaming, instead of being at war with uh, fellow Americans who are not Americans, we could be here celebrating that we restored the Constitution of the United States of America. Yeah. Give me liberty or give me death! Thank you, Dan.